Polynomial functions are very lower bounds with synthetic division. What are they? Polynomial functions are expressions that contain non-negative powers with varying degrees, coefficients, and constants. Why? Helps with logic skills. Interesting fact, zebras stand up while sleeping. Now, let's take a look at the first theorem on bounds for real zeros of polynomials. Suppose that f of x is a polynomial with real coefficients and a positive leading coefficient, and that f of x is divided synthetically by x minus c. Statement 1. If c is greater than 0, and if all numbers in the third row of the division process are either positive or 0, then c is an upper bound for real zeros of f of x. Statement 2. If c is less than 0, and if all numbers in the third row of the division process are alternately positive and negative, a 0 in the third row is considered to be either positive or negative, then c is a lower bound for real zeros of f of x. Now, let's take a look at the example we're going to discuss in today's video to see that theorem in action. Let's read the steps. Step 1. Narrow down your search. Step 2. Use synthetic division. Step 3. Repeat until you have the upper and lower bound. Now, let's read the question. Find the upper and lower bounds for the real solutions of the function f of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 6x plus 8. Before we start, let's talk about what we want to see. On the top right, we have positive, 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 which is an upper bound using statement 1, and we have positive, negative, positive, negative, which is a lower bound using statement 2. First, we need to find the factors of the constant, which is 8, and divide those by the factors of the leading coefficient, which is 2. So we have plus or minus 1, 2, 4, 8 on top, and plus or minus 1, 2 on bottom. The result, a plus or minus each number on top, divided by a plus or minus each number on bottom, will narrow down the search for the bounds. We want to start with a number in the middle, so we can eliminate numbers that are greater or lower than that one. For instance, if we start with 8, our result is an upper bound, because all the numbers on bottom are positive so we didn't eliminate any numbers. We only found information that we already knew, that 8 is an upper bound. Let's take a closer look at the numbers 2, 11, 82, 712. The 712 tells us we're too far away from the least upper bound. And now let's pick 4, which is in the middle. Our result is an upper bound because all the numbers on bottom are positive. Let's take a closer look at the numbers. 2, 3, 6, 32. The 32 tells us that we're close to finding the least upper bound. What number are we searching for? We want the last number to be 0, or as close to 0 as possible. If the last number is positive and close to 0, then we probably found our least upper bound. If the last number is negative, then we try again and increase the number we picked by 1. In this case, we don't need to pick 5, since we know 5 is an upper bound, and 32 is greater than 0. So let's pick 3. 3 is not a result of any of the factors of the constant divided by the factors of the leading coefficient. But now, we have narrowed down our search enough to pick the next smallest whole number, which is 3. Our result is not an upper bound, because not all the numbers on bottom are positive, since we have 2, 1, negative 3, negative 1. What does this mean? Ah, this tells us that 4 is not only an upper bound, but is the least upper bound. Now that we've found the least upper bound, let's move on to the lower bound. This time, we're not going to pick negative 8, since it is not in the middle. Let's pick negative 1. Our result is not a lower bound, since the numbers on bottom are not alternating positive negative, since we have 2, negative 6, 0, 8. Let's take a closer look at these numbers. Remember, we want positive, negative, positive, negative. We have positive, negative, positive, positive, or positive, negative, negative, positive, because the zero can be either positive or negative. We're almost there, since we only need the last number to be negative. So what number should we choose next? I'm thinking negative two. Our result is the greatest lower bound because the numbers on bottom alternate positive-negative since we have 
2, negative 7, 8, negative 8, and we started in the middle and worked outward. With the upper bound, we did the opposite, so we weren't sure where we needed to stop. Let's do one more to see what happens. Let's pick negative 3. Negative 3 is not a result of any of the factors of the constant divided by the factors of the leading coefficient, but it is the next smallest integer. Our result is a lower bound, since the numbers on bottom alternate negative positive since we have 2, negative 11, 27, negative 73. And if we keep going, we will continue to get lower bounds. Now we found the greatest lower bound. Let's see what we found. So we can create an interval using the greatest lower bound and the least upper bound. And that interval is negative 2, 4. And this tells us the real zeros are in there somewhere. Now let's use this information to graph. We have our interval negative 2, 4. Let's put some dashed lines at x equals negative 2 and x equals 4. So we can see where the real zeros could be. The real zeros are approximately negative 1.5, 1, and 3. And finally, let's graph. That is example 1. Now it is your turn. So go ahead and pause the video here so you can take your time to answer this question and I'll show you the results in 3, 2, and 1. Here's the least upper bound, here's the greatest lower bound, here's the interval, and here's the graph. Did you get it correct? Fantastic. If not, there's always tomorrow.